Hey everybody, Roxbox and I here back with another Battle for Zendikar spoiler video. We got a lot of great stuff. I think today is officially day one of Battle for Zendikar spoilers, so I'm hoping that we'll be seeing lots more spoilers coming to us regularly now in the next days and weeks before the set's release. Uh, but we got a lot of great stuff to talk about today. Right before we do, I'm just going to mention that somebody found a Rashadin port. I think it was an accidental print. Um, and that was put into a different judge level pack or a different promo pack and this one wasn't supposed to be there but it was which shows us that down the pipeline which we kind of already knew from past uh, past info dumps we kind of already knew this was going to be a card here it is foil for shot and port for those who don't know the original set foil is many many hundreds of dollars the judge promos tend to be a lot less even though they can often be more than the original non-foil version, they're usually a lot less than the original print version, especially for really rare cards like Mercedian Mask. Uh, the Rashad import from Mercedian Mask, which the foil is crazy rare and crazy expensive. I really like the art, I like the flavor, I like the design, and I don't know when it's coming down the pipeline, but when it does, keep an eye out if you're looking for one, because it'll be really cool. I'll let you guys know if I find out more. Planar Outburst. Yay, the R from the trailer smashing Eldrazi heads, but not more than one, so why is this a Wrath Spell? I have no idea, but it is five for a Wrath Spell, destroy all non-land creatures. Cool mechanic because there's a land or lands in the picture fighting, and they're not dying. Everything else is going to die, all the creatures. Really cool. It's basically end hostilities for the environment, which I think is fine. I like that it has Awaken 4 for 8 mana, because it means as an 8 mana Wrath, you're left with a 4-4 four, four after the fact which is very solid if you were wrathing the field that late in the game, having it 4-4, which could potentially attack immediately if you put it on a land that's, you know, if you have your land untapped, it could potentially attack immediately, 4-4 four, four haste, and wipe the field for 8 mana. Very scalable, very good card. Obviously, it's going to see play, uh, at least I boarded for control decks. I could definitely see it seeing even more play. Uh, very cool design, and I love the art. Deep Sea Scavenger, 2 for a 1-1, one, one. Devoid, Death Touch, and Jest, 5, 3 in blue-black, draw a card, each opponent exiles a top card. Uh, I like and dislike this card. I like this card because it's a really cheap Eldrazi. It has Death Touch, which makes it kind of like a, uh, um, as an early drop, Death Touch tends to be very good in limited environments, and having a Mana Sink that draws cards is usually good. What I dislike is that the mana sync ability seems rather weak. For 5 mana, drawing 1 card, and the exile effect is just 1, seems for 5 mana a lot, a lot to ask, especially for a rare. And the fact that it's black and a blue as a 2 drop, potentially annoying because it's very color demanding. If unless you're playing a black-blue deck, especially if they're encouraging Converge to be something, then it's going to be difficult to run three, four, five colors, say, and have this guy as your two drop. Unlikely going to happen. Uh, but we'll have to see what archetypes the Eldrazi fall into. Blue black seems to be something that they're they're fitting as a niche. We'll see where this guy falls. I definitely want to try him, but I'm skeptical. Lumbering falls. Yes, yes. Enemy man lands are here, and they are going to have. My, my gut feeling says they'll have all five. They've only spoiled the blue-green one. It taps for a blue and a green. Four mana becomes a 3-3 three, three green-blue elemental with Hexproof. Hexproof is important because we have Awaken in this set. And so having Hexproof, any kind of land pumping, land boosting mechanic that the land can't be targeted by spot removal is very, very good. It's also very good basically if people are attacking into it, they can't use um, rem removal in combat to manipulate this kind of card and it gives you the option of pumping your dude via combat trick and such. I think it's a very solid land. For those who don't know much about enemy man lands and why they're so good, I'm not going to give a dissertation now, but I would recommend you read the article. They give a lot of in-depth explanation of how man lands work and why they're important, uh, and it looks like a really nice variant, so I'm looking forward to getting this card, playing with it. It's definitely going to my cube, and standard is going to be great. Bring to light. Five for a sorcery. Converge. Library. Search library for an instant creature sorcery for mana cost less than or equal to the number of colors spent to cast it and then exile the card you can cast it without paying mana cost the the putting into exile is dangerous if you're not going to play it right away because of the cards that put things from exile into graveyards but assuming you're going to cast it right away this kind of card i think is really cool because it's scalable you can put it in 
two, three, four, five color deck, and it's progressively more powerful depending on the colors you have in your deck. Really, really nice for limited, I think, being able to search your deck and grab out. Potentially even something for constructed, being able to search stuff. There's a lot of really, really strong search and put into play cards, and this one seems rather solid. Uh, it could be a complete dud, but it looks really solid to me. And I like that it's a ca you may cast the card because there are a number of cards in the set and other sets that if you you know if you cast this card, something happens. Being able to take advantage of that, and not just put it directly into play, makes it more powerful than some other kind of put into play cards. Uh, I like the flexibility. I like the art. I really like this card all around. I think it's really solid. Desolation Twin card I don't love particularly. It's kind of boring. It's 10-10. I'll draw Z for 10. And when you cast it, you get a 10-10. The idea here is that if you're investing 10 mana in Eldrazi, there someone counterspells it, you should still get something from it. So you still get a 10-10 no matter what. Uh, and that's all there is to this card. It's either two 10-10s for 10, which means you're in a ridiculously good board state, or they counterspell and you still get a 10-10. Eh, nothing special here nothing really to say. Uh, good for Commander, obviously, and it's going to be a, a madly annoying card to deal with in Limited. Lastly, we'll go through the promos quickly from Battle for Zendikar. Scythe Leopard, 1-1 one, one for 1 with Landfall. It only gets 1-1 one, one till end of turn. This is... It reminds me of... I forget. I always forget the name of cards, but there was a card from the original Zendikar set, 1 for an 0-1, that would get, I believe, 2 plus 2 end of turn when you played from landfall this card is it's a 1-1 not an 0-1 but obviously it's not quite as powerful that way it will though often be a very it will probably be a very good aggressive card because every single turn it's likely going to be a 2-2 most of the time uh, buy a box promo is runa's path which could potentially be the new hero's downfall i.e could be worth money so good card uh, re the release card will be Blight Herder. We've seen this card. This is an art variant. Uh, the card itself, as we've said, is fine. This seems to be a lot of printings of this card, but hey, fine. Game day card, Stasis Snare. I like this card a lot as a flash removal spell. That's uh, It's not an O-ring. It's more like a journey into nowhere, which was one and a white, and this is one a white white, but you have flash instead. Very solid removal, and I like the full art and the, the art overall. Radiant Flames, we've seen before. The art looks insane here. Also, solid, decent card. Uh, and then we got this Game Day Champion, which I think, is this Drana? I'm not quite sure if it's Drana, but the pose and the artwork, it could just be some kind of vampire, vampire lord, but it reminds me of Drana very much. Uh, let me know if you guys agree, disagree on that. So, what do you guys think? We got a lot of spoilers today. Some really cool stuff. I'd love to hear what you guys think about all the spoilers, especially the Manlands, down below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, then please tap the like button. If you're new to the channel, check it and subscribe. As always, Roxabox90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.